Now, one of the acres that you see every day on Court TV is joining us live. We are so happy to have Julie Grant with us live on our news at midday. So, Julie, it is fantastic to have you. Oh, I'm so thrilled to be here, Ross. Thank you so much. It's, it's a real honor and a pleasure to be here at KTNV. Of Thanks course. A million. Yeah, so I want to talk more about the Harvey Weinstein trial. Sure. This is something you guys have been following since day one, really. Um, and now jury deliberations in day three. I think a lot of people thought that this was going to be a slam dunk case just based on the number of accusers that were coming out against Harvey Weinstein. How do you think the longer that this goes on with jury deliberations, how do you think that will affect the potential outcome here? That is a great question, Ross, and you're right. I think a lot of people thought it was a slam dunk. One thing I've learned with trials, it's never a slam dunk. You just never know what a jury will do. And there are 87 accusers pointing the finger at Harvey Weinstein, but there are only six who are part of this case right. and two who are named complaining witnesses in the indictment. So really the jury is only allowed to focus on the accusers that the prosecution is putting forth in New York City. And sure. typically when jury deliberations don't go very long, usually we think it's probably more favorable for the prosecution. Right. And when they're out longer, you think, oh, this might be more of a defense verdict uh, because they're they're stuck. Apparently they're stuck on something or perhaps it could be a hung jury and a mistrial may be declared if they can't arrive at a verdict on any of the counts. So it's really interesting. We're on that verdict watch right now and uh, they're on a lunch break. As I understand, the jury's on a lunch break and usually the judge keeps them until about 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if not today, then maybe tomorrow or maybe next week. That big breaking news is coming any day now, really. Um, I'm curious about the breakdown of the jury. I, I believe it was seven men and five women. How Correct. do you think that that could affect the potential verdict here? That's a great question, Ross. Generally, we, and trial advocacy is, is an art, it's not a science, but generally what we see in studying it is that sometimes with cases involving sexual assault allegations, that female jurors are sometimes more critical and a little tougher on female victims. And here when you have alleged victims that are all female, we know there are five on the jury, sometimes that can affect things. And yesterday we noticed that those female jurors were really, really taking copious notes, more so than the male jurors when some of the testimony was being read back. Mm -hmm. they, this jury has sent out five notes so far. It's really a conscientious jury. They wanna get this right and the notes are very detailed. They, they have subsections to them wow. and they're looking for lots of information and clarification. So sometimes I think that that could be an indication, but again, you just never know. It's all trying to read the tea leaves, so to speak. Absolutely, and you gotta give the jury credit for doing their due diligence and trying to do their American uh, you know, duty and, and try to come to the right uh, yes. verdict here. Do you have one, a sense one way or the other of, of how this is gonna turn out? Yes, uh, my best educated guess, and this is doing my job at Court TV, which is to look at every case objectively and right. to analyze the evidence objectively, look at the facts, look at the law as it applies and how the advocacy is done. I think my best prediction is I think we're going to see a mixed verdict or a split verdict, sometimes it's called, where I think this jury will convict him on some of the charges pertaining to accuser Mimi Halle. But I think we may see either a hung jury or a jury that finds him not guilty of the charges pertaining to Jessica Mann. So these are the two complaining witnesses with vastly different stories. Well, your coverage has been fantastic. I just want to thank, thank you for you. that. And, and really quickly, you guys sure. are working on uh, this docuseries about O.J. Simpson, and obviously he has strong ties here to the Las Vegas Valley. When can people see that, and, and what is that going to be all about? Yes. Oh, I love that question, Ross. Tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern time, a brand new episode of O.J. 25. So what we're doing at Court TV is 25 years since this trial has happened, we are looking back at each week of the trial. We're looking back at the evidence, the lawyering, everything going on. And so each week on Court TV, you can see in the episode kind of a summary of what happened. Yeah. This week, we're going to see attention focused on the bloody gloves. So there's a little a little teaser for the bloody gloves. Detective Tom Lang, who was one of the lead detectives, will be appearing in the episode tonight. Wow. One of the most fascinating and monumental cases in American history. Yes. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure. Oh, thank you kindly for having me, Roz. All right. And don't forget, you can watch Court TV on air on channel 13.4. We'll be right back.